The human body is constantly bombarded with all sorts of foreign antigens, including microorganisms, pathogens, environmental antigens, and agents that cause tissue damage and cellular transformation. The cells of the innate and adaptive immune system protect us from these insults. These cells are present not only in blood, but are also localized in lymphoid tissues and barrier sites throughout the body where they coordinate tissue immunity, like tissue repair, anti-tumor immunity, and protection from pathogens and inflammation. So, how can we study the development of immune response and function throughout the body in different sites and over age? This question is particularly challenging to study in humans because these tissue sites are less accessible than peripheral blood. This study, a collaborative effort between the labs of Dr. Donna Farber at Columbia University in New York City and Dr. Louis Lanier at the University of California, San Francisco, uses a novel tissue resource to explore the effects of tissue localization on natural killer cell diversity. My laboratory has established a novel tissue resource. We obtain tissues from human organ donors in collaboration with Live on New York, the organ procurement organization, for the New York metropolitan area. We have on-call surgeons in the lab who go to the site of organ acquisition. After all, the clinical teams have obtained organs for life-saving transplantation. Our surgeons come in and obtain multiple lymphoid, mucosal sites, and barrier sites, and bring them back to the lab where the tissues are processed and the cells analyzed for studies on the human immune system. In this study, we use these human tissues to generate an atlas of human natural killer cell development, function, and diversity over the human body. Natural killer cells, or NK cells, are innate immune cells with the unique ability to kill abnormal cells, including virus-infected or tumor cells, without harming normal cells of the body. NK cells recognize target cells through signals received from germline encoded cell surface receptors. NK cells undergo a stepwise development program starting from hematopoietic cells to precursors followed by immature NK cells and finally a functionally mature NK cell state where they are highly cytolytic. What we found was that NK cell distribution is highly tissue dependent. There are sites like blood, bone marrow, spleen and lung that have an abundance of NK cells. On the other hand, sites like tonsil, gut, and lymph node have very small populations of NK cells. Additionally, we discovered that the distribution of NK cell immature and mature subsets is also tissue dependent. Immature NK cells are tissue resident and they demonstrate transcriptomic diversity across sites and are enriched in sites like lymph node, tonsil, and gut. Tissue sites with high frequencies of NK cells also have a predominance of mature NK cells. These mature NK cells are mostly circulating throughout the body and display a high degree of transcriptional similarity between sites. They express high levels of cytolytic molecules and undergo terminal differentiation and also form memory-like NK cells. Hi, this is Louis Lanier. In this nice collaboration with Donna Farber's lab, we found consistent tissue-specific patterns of NK cell subset distribution. Together, we identified specific types of NK cells in early maturation states that were uniquely distributed in human lymph nodes and intestines, and that the lung was enriched in terminally differentiated NK cells. Our results were remarkably consistent between donors across all ages, providing a new blueprint for human NK cell studies. So, Prene, there are many implications of our findings. You identified similar patterns of NK subset distribution in tissues in individuals of all ages, from ages 5 to 94, suggesting that we maintain uh, reservoirs of immature and precursor NK cells throughout our lifetime. Also, the presence of immature NK cells in lymph nodes that express transcription factors associated with stemness and quiescence suggest that they can be a source of NK cells for future immunotherapies. And finally, the identification of the surveilling NK cell, that mature cytolytic NK cell, throughout circulation in blood and bone marrow and lung and spleen 
gives us insights into the role of NK cells in the human immune response.